Hey CLA, Cody here. Hoping you're having a fantastic week. We've got a great online service expectant for you this morning. So stay tuned, we'll have worship, we'll have a message. We'll be back up for some announcements in between even. And we just hope that you have a really great time with friends and family this long weekend. Standing here in your presence In a grave so relentless I am By perfect love Up within the arms of heaven In a peace that lasts forever Sinking deep In mercy see
Good morning, Good morning, CLA. CLA. We're so excited to be here with you online this weekend. We hope you're enjoying time with your friends and family. My name is Spencer. And I'm Nema, and we have some information about our jam-packed fun weekend coming up uh, starting on September 9th. Yeah, so guys, first fun news. Next Friday, we have our youth lunch, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. So youth, come out. Yeah, get expectant. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Yeah, I can't wait. Personally, I'm I'm gonna be there. It's gonna be so I'm fun. Gonna be there. Next on the 10th Saturday at 10 a.m. we have the Terminator Run, the 5K Run at Confederation Park. We're still looking for people to sponsor our runners along with volunteers to help on the day of the event. Um, we're looking to put together a CLA team. If you're interested in that, we would love if you could email us at info at clacalvary.com to get involved. Second, September 11th, the final day of the weekend, we have our 11. CLA fall launch. How excited are you? I'm, I'm excited. I'm pumped. I am expected. We, the Lord's been working this sun, summer, and we're just excited to see that trickle into the fall and see what's coming. So we would love to see you all there and in person on September 11th. Next, on September 18th, we have Church in the Park. So service is going to be there. We're going to have a little worship moment. Bring your, your lawn chairs, blankets. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, expect fun games, competition. Who doesn't love all these things? We're just going to have Sunday morning community, but in the park. Exactly. Yeah, so excited. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, Tim's going to be continuing us today in our Salt and Light series. But before we welcome him up, I just want to pray for us today. So, Lord, thank you so much, God, for everyone who's listening in. I pray that, Lord, you just meet them exactly where they're at. I pray that you just increase in every way, that you'd increase their awareness of your presence. You'd increase the, the hunger in their hearts just to know you more. And I pray that you just speak through this message that the pastor team delivers. So we, we bless you, God, and, and bless everyone listening. And, yeah, I just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. See ya. I commend all of you for showing up. This is a hearty group. My name is Krista and this is Kenzie. Um, we're with Community Now Magazine and we're here because we're supporters of the Terminator Foundation and Venetia and we just believe in everything that she's doing. Honestly, the I know it is a little bit chilly. It's not the, the most ideal conditions uh, for the run, but in a lot of ways, I was thinking about this too and this, it's never ideal, you know what I mean? We're dealing with a, an issue that's not ideal. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't care about the weather, it doesn't care about anything, right? And so it just kind of, it parallels really what we're dealing with. So we're, we're here regardless because it's, it is an important issue. If you're going through any mental health issues or addiction, please ask for help. It's the best thing you can do and it's the best thing for our whole community. On behalf of the Calgary Police Service, I want to thank everybody for bringing the awareness to this and for the all the help from your, your from your team. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> uh, I just know Venetia is like probably one of the most influential people in my sobriety, along with Terminator. I don't know if I'd still be sober today without Terminator. Uh, the odds are not very high for a person in early recovery and <laughs> Terminator, it, it just gave me one more tool in my toolbox to remain sober and to just uh, start feeling better. So thank you, coach.
Good morning, CLA, and welcome back to another online experience here at church. Pastor Tim with you. Long weekend of September as we move ourselves into the fall. We are praying for you, thinking about all of you as you take these hot last few days of August and move ourselves towards a busy fall season. Parents, we are praying for you as well, getting your kids ready for school. No different in our house. Lots of action, lots of decisions to be made, uh, new shirts, new sneakers, figuring out outfits. It's all been our reality. As we look at this conclusion of our series, our summer series, Salt and Light, I have the privilege to land this plane today. Now, let me tell you, it's not easy taking the words of Jesus through chapter 5 of Matthew into 6 and 7 and bring concluding thoughts. We could really land here for the next year, but God is taking us on a new direction for the fall. So I want to take just a couple minutes this morning and give us some things to think about, some things that really, I believe, sum up so much of who Jesus is and what he was trying to accomplish in these words to the people on that hillside, really to all humanity, and bring some thoughts for us that can help us think about God's presence in our life. I'm landing on verse 17 of chapter 5. This is right after the Beatitudes, and it's Jesus bringing truth to us that I think sometimes we just could you know, race past this verse and not actually recognize how important it is. Let me read it to you. Verse 17, it says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Let's look at the Passion Translation. It says, If you think I've come to set aside the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets, you, you're mistaken. I have come to fulfill and bring to perfection all that has been written. Now, when we talk about law and prophets, when Jesus refers to this, what does he mean? What is he referring to? He's actually highlighting the Old Testament. The law and prophets is representing the Old Testament scripture, the writings that were in front of them, the Torah from Genesis all the way to the book of Malachi. He's announcing in this moment that his, his purpose here on earth was not to ignore the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, but was rather to fulfill and accomplish all that it represented so that we could move towards the New Covenant, the New Testament, the new way of thinking for believers, for humanity, for all that would embrace who Jesus is. Now this morning I want to start off with an exercise. Usually it's a story, but today it's an exercise. We're online. I want, to, I want us all to be engaged. I want us to think about um, a time in the last few weeks where you experienced a difficult moment. Maybe it's coming home from holidays like Devin and I and finding out that your fridge is no longer producing cold air and you can't fix it, so you have to buy a brand new one, and it's twice the price that it was when you bought it four years ago. Hello, that is our reality. Now, I joke with you, but in all seriousness, when you experience that obstacle, did you, or have you, taken the time to stop and sincerely acknowledge God's presence in the moment? Now, full confession, Today, I didn't do that when I found out about my fridge. I did not turn my affection towards the Lord and say, God, you are in control. No, what we do often when we're facing an obstacle or a moment where we can fix something, we default to our own understanding, to our own takeover. And that's exactly what happens often in our lives. But when is the last time you stopped and said, Lord, I trust you? We all want to be that person. I want to be that pastor for all of you. And I want to model and, and be an example for all of us as to the, the reactions that we should have when we face 
challenging moments in our life. The idea, though, of stress and striving and straining, it actually comes very natural to, to all of us. It's a, it's a natural default reaction. But, but I have to say it again. When's the last time you said, Lord, I trust you with this situation. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my kids. I trust you with uh, providing for the need that is in front of us. There are so many moments where we should be acknowledging God's presence. We often are talking about trusting God with the things that are of spiritual dynamic, uh, the areas of our life that we hold so dearly when it comes to faith and to the journey with Jesus. But why aren't we acknowledging Him when it comes to our appliances? or to our careers or sometimes our shortcomings? It's a great question. I wrestle through this often, figure, trying to figure out why my default is to do it myself and to figure it out on my own. Oftentimes, instead of trusting God, it, it's, it's this idea of a knee-jerk reaction where we, here we go again, trusting myself in my own ways of thinking before I allow the Lord to take over. And what happens is we stress over it again and again and again. I say it like this as I kind of wrap up the introduction today. My desire for our CLA community, for the families, all of you that are represented, is to create an environment where we are actively aware of God's involvement in our everyday life. Now that is a, a lofty desire, but it's I believe something that we can accomplish as a church where the environment we are creating is actively aware of God's involvement in the everyday. What does Matthew 5 verse 17 have to do with this? Well, it's absolutely essential. Let me explain. As mentioned earlier, the law is describing the Old Testament, which is an old way to relate to God and life. The old way can be defined by trusting ourselves in and our own performance, relating God and others based on our performance. Now, the reality is that the Old Testament is completely based on these things. And Jesus came not to ignore that and the value of working hard and, 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 and trusting in our own skills and the things that God has put inside us, but it cannot stop there. It cannot conclude with that being our go-to. If we look at life in general, this would, I think, describe the world around us. Jesus said it again that I have not come to ignore it, but to fulfill this reality. I say that we are here this morning on this long weekend celebrating the fact that Jesus has come to introduce us to a completely new way of existing. I appreciate all the nuggets of truth that Jesus shares with us that we receive from his teachings, from his life, from his actions. But let me just say it like this. Jesus isn't just a bunch of of truths or a bunch of principles that we can abide by. He, in fact, is the Savior of the world, the Savior of the universe. Whether or not you can fulfill all 600 laws doesn't really matter anymore because of what Jesus came to accomplish here on earth. It doesn't matter how hard we work, how, how much we strive to be, an example to those around us. At the end of the day, there's something more important at stake, and that's what I want uh, to double down on this morning. The New Testament, the whole emphasis is not based on our performance, but it is Jesus' performance and how much he loves you and me. The drama of family will distract you and I from receiving the clarity and understanding and perspective that we all need to see things through the proper lens. And I pray that you hear that this morning. Jesus suggests that we should relate to things differently and not compartmentalize life. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we do this where I'll take care of the, the certain things on my own in my own strength. And when I think about it, maybe I'll invite God into 
the situation when it feels right or convenient. No, no, no. That is not the posture that we are to take as followers of Jesus. This is very important. And I'll, I want to say it like this kind of to conclude this piece is a do good, get good kind of thinking is a logical performance-based mantra of our culture. So if we do good, then we get good. That is not the way of Jesus. He did not preach this reality. He did not express his heart on, this, on, the, on the mountainside during the sermon, the Beatitudes. He modeled something else instead, and it is this. I did good, referring to Jesus, he did good so that we could receive God or get God into our lives. Now, do good, get good versus Jesus doing good, therefore we get to have God in our every day are two very different ways of thinking and living. Jesus said, I fulfilled the do good, get good reality. Now church, hear me today as I unpack this for the next few minutes. What if we embrace this reality for our life? Where Jesus did for you what you could not do for yourself so that you and I could have proper relationship with God. It's important to explore this concept of living because it helps us break down that selfish, independent nature that tries to dominate our thoughts, our mind, our actions every single day. And it also goes really just beyond ourselves. Hear this. We have to figure out how to love people for who they are, not for who we want them to be. Something's got to give. We have to have a conviction in our hearts. Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. The result is an unbroken, unconditional relationship with God that continues to grow and flourish in our lives. But this brings me to a thought as we move from this into my conclusion. I want to look at the Jewish believers who were involved in the book of Hebrews. 60 to 70 years removed from Christ's time on earth. Really, six, six decades after Jesus was resurrected from death. Now, the writings to these Jewish believers uh, gives us a wrestle. It's very clear that they are wrestling with this idea of going back to the traditional ways of thinking, where the Torah with the teachings of the old law, rules, regulations, moral excellence. And the writer of Hebrews, we're not 100% sure who that was, but many think it was Paul, is, is wrestling through this with them, um, desiring to speak truth into their lives and reminding them of the importance of not moving back, but actually moving forward to what is of so much importance. The writer of Hebrews is urging them not to go back to their old ways. Now let's look at this in Hebrews chapter 1 together. It says, Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment at a time, building one truth upon another. But to us living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of a son, the appointed heir of everything. For through him, God created the panorama of all things and all time. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. He holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. He accomplished it for us, uh, for us, the complete cleansing of sins, and then took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of the majestic one. Wow, there's so much in there. And as you can see, if you read this passage, God is desiring to remind us and to teach us the importance of recognizing who Jesus is and the fulfillment that he came to accomplish here on earth. That's Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 3. Now I want to look at Hebrews 13. So that's the beginning of the letter. Here's the end of the letter to these Jewish people. He says, 
Now may the God who brought us peace by raising from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, so that he would be the great shepherd of his flock, and by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, may he work perfection into every part of you, giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. And may he express through you all that is excellent and pleasing to him through your life union with Jesus, the anointed one who is to re receive all glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow. I can't tell you how important these few words are that we find in the book of Hebrews. I want to extrapolate some observations here from this passage. Very important ones. Look what... Look what the writer is saying, that we have peace because of the resurrection. When Jesus walked into that locked room after he was raised from the dead, when he revealed himself to his followers in that space that we read about in the book of Acts, the supernatural peace of God for all mankind came flooding in not as a moment that would come and go, but something that we could draw from forever as followers of Christ. Really for all humanity as we make recognition that God is present in our every day. We see this about the Good Shepherd where he is caring, caring for our thoughts and for our mind and for our the way that we think and the way that we go about our every day. He is the great shepherd of all people, the scripture says. And then back down in verse 21, it says this, Jesus will equip you with everything good that you may do. His will working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus. Here's the, the pr practical conclusion to all of my thoughts this morning. Well, Tim, I recognize what you're saying is, is important. And I understand that we need to, we need to move our, our emotions and our posture towards uh, seeing God present in our everyday. But what about that refrigerator that died in the, in the kitchen? What about the pipe that burst? in my bathroom last month? What about the experience that I'm facing right now? How, how do I approach it with excellence? How do I embrace God's presence when everything around me is falling apart? I don't remember the last time Jesus showed up and handed me physical cash for a great need that I have in my life. My point is this, we cannot land on a selfish conclusion. We've heard probably this thought before, God helps those who help themselves. Well, let me just explain to you, that's not from the Bible. We wanna get away from that mentality of having to lean on our own strength, focusing in on how we can fix what's in front of us just by doing it ourselves. That is, not the posture, that is not the way of living that Jesus has provided for us through his life. Yes, there are some active things that Christ is, is going to do for you and me, and he has already done that and will continue to do that, but he wants to equip us and he wants to work through us in a way that gives him glory, that gives glory to God and glory to his creation. Now, we have an active responsibility to live in a way that makes Jesus attractive to others. Equipping means to provide, and work as in this passage means that he's going to put all of these things together for us. He will equip us and he will work in us. Jesus is inviting this life that is absent from stress and from striving. Now, when we find this posture, when we actively live this way, it not only helps us, but it helps everyone around us as well. The will of God, and uh, referring to what this passage is talking about, is not synonymous with the career path or the desires of our heart necessarily. The will of God, let me remind you, is that you would love Him, you would love God and that you would love your neighbor. That's what it really comes down to. 
and we try so hard to actively create this reputation for life that is full of accomplishments and full of uh, an investment into things that we think matter. Jesus is very clearly revealing to us that his will for our life is to love him and to love our neighbor. Some of us are waiting for God's will to happen, but God's will is that you would fall more in love with him and that you would fall more in love with the people around you. Never lose heart of the most important thing. I believe all other uh, ideas and rhythms of life will fall into place when we hold this truth as priority, to focus in our attention, our care, our concern, to a relationship with Jesus, falling in love with him, falling in love with his heart, with his desires for our life. And with that comes a passion for people. And then from there, the outflow is so life-giving that those around us cannot ignore the presence of God in our every day. Here's what I love that God is not just equipping you and me to, uh, to keep all of that for ourselves, but he is indeed asking us to share these truths and these ideas and these realities with those around us. What the community does is it helps us to keep our perspective on the goodness of God. Now, what do I mean by this? We have to think less selfishly. The best remedy that I have for all of us is to stay in community. Because when the fridge dies and when something tragic happens or a disappointment comes our way, the enemy will come and he will try to distract us in that moment and force us to lose heart from the bigger picture. But when we stay in community and we surround ourselves with people that are actively pursuing the same things, we then receive from them through testimony, through uh, the joys of what God is doing in and through their life. And what takes place in that moment is that we turn our affection from our own experience and we move it towards celebration for others, which then fixes our thoughts on who God is and what he is doing and how actively he is involved in all of our lives. It is important to stay connected with each other. That's what community does. It keeps our perspective on God's goodness. And I can't say it enough. We need to be actively involved in this. All of us making sure that we are learning from each other. God is working in us. He's a good God. He's a God that loves us. And he wants us to focus all of our affection on him and to recognize his faithfulness in our lives. When we see this and when we embrace this, we can, all of us, every single one of us, have a perspective that truly is of eternal value. I want this for our church. I want us to recognize that what we have in front of us is a season of building, a season of growing, a season where CLA can be a place for many, many people to receive from the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Concluding this morning, I want to pray for all, all of us that are maybe struggling or wrestling through this. Would the Lord bring peace to your heart this morning as you think about these thoughts found in the book of Matthew as well as in Hebrews? Would you not lose heart of the importance of setting aside what it is that you think you need for your life and actually focusing on the goodness of God. And with that will come so much revelation of why we are here and what we are to accomplish. Jesus, give us the strength to persevere, to move towards understanding who you are. May I pray for you, church, as we conclude these thoughts today. Jesus, I thank you for this moment as we finish up the thoughts today. Lord, I pray that you would embrace each and every one of us, that you would remind us this morning that you are ultimately in control and that it is not about us 
striving towards achieving things so that we can re receive much from you or that we will receive much by doing. But Father, it's all about recognizing your son Jesus, what he accomplished for us on the cross through that sacrifice. And because of that moment, we have access to you in our every day. You are God and you are in control. And it is our job to model what that looks like for all humanity. I pray protection and care over each one this morning as we move on with our day. I thank you for the words of Jesus, for the understanding that we have received through the Beatitudes, through the Sermon on the Mount. I ask, Lord, that it would land in our hearts in a place that much fruit would be developed and our lives would ultimately express your goodness. I thank you for this in Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, church. Have a great rest of the day today. We love you. See you next Sunday. Reminder, Terminator Run is on Saturday. Come on out, Confederation Park around 9 a.m. and cheer on the runners. It's gonna be a fantastic time of support and partnership with the Terminator Foundation. That's on Saturday coming up here this week. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Goodbye.